All right, so this is a non-typically record, recorded moment, but we're talking about inverse trig functions, and it's causing people a little bit of worry. So um, let's go ahead and do some of these problems. So we're going to focus on the quiz question. So this is quiz 14. And we're talking about question number one. There's a bunch of different things in question number one. So let's start with A and B. A and B are very similar questions. All they do is they give you what is the inverse trig function of something. So let's look at A first. A is equal to, or A is, X is equal to cosine inverse or arc cosine of square root of 2 over 2. Part B, instead of asking for cosine, it's asking for inverse tangent. So these are nice to do side by side because they're similar in some ways and dissimilar in others. So the first thing I do whenever I'm faced with an inverse function is I go off to the side and I write what is the range of my inverse function? That is, what can it output? Cosine is an even function. So its range is actually 0 to pi. That corresponds to quadrants 1 and quadrants 2. Try to sneak a four in there, quadrants one and two, because cosine is positive in quadrant one and negative in quadrant two. Inverse tangent, however, which works just like inverse sine, that is an odd function. So its range is negative pi over two to pi over two. That corresponds to quadrants four and quadrant one. That's because both sine and tangent are negative in quadrant four and positive in quadrant one. So before I do anything, I set the framework. What can my output be? It has to be in that range. The next thing I do for a problem like this, for a problem like 1a or 1b, is I look at what I'm dealing with, what I've been given inside my inverse. What inverse cosine of square root of 2 over 2 means is what angle, if I took the cosine of that angle, what would give me square root of 2 over 2? So these are going to involve my two special triangles. And let's draw both of these. As soon as I see square root of 2, I think 45 degrees. 1, 1 square root of 2. You notice I don't talk about unit circles and memorizing the unit circle. I like triangles. If you prefer to memorize the unit circle, go for it. You can use that method as well to recognize what square root of 2 over 2 is. But I prefer triangles because they're concrete. So this is that. So with these two special triangles, I can answer any of these questions because they're all going to be exact values. They're all going to work, be working out to be one of um, either 45, 30 degrees, or 60 degrees. And we'll remind ourselves that 45 degrees is pi over 4, 30 degrees is pi over 6, and 60 degrees is pi over 3. All right, so let's get back to these problems. So what angle causes me to have a positive square root of 2 over 2? Well, even though this is a 1 square root of 2, we remember, let's see, cosine of an angle theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So in this case, it's 1 over square root of 2. And if I rationalize the denominator, it's square root of 2 over 2. So that means that this angle x is equal to 45 degrees or pi over 4. But before I step away from the problem, I make sure I get the 
S-I-G-N sine, positive or negative, correct. If cosine, inverse cosine of pi, positive pi over 2, that means it's got to be in quadrant 1. So that means 45 degrees or pi over 4 are, is in quadrant 1, so I'm done. With the second one, though, it's a little bit different because I have a negative value. So as soon as I see the square root of 3, I know I'm talking about the 30, 60, 90 triangle. And square root of 3, since tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent, it looks like it's going to be 30 degrees because that would be 1 over square root of 3. So that means x is equal to 30 degrees or pi over 6. But if it was a negative um, 1 over square root of 3, that means it's not in quadrant 1. That means it's in quadrant 4. And my range of tangent for quadrant 4 is negative pi over 2 to 0. So that means these are actually negative values. So that's that type of problem. Then we have problems like part C and D. Part C and D work the same way. So we'll put a break here. So C and D are both in terms of the same function and its inverse. So C was sine inverse of sine of something, negative 2 pi over 19. And this one is cosine of inverse cosine of 2.24. Excuse me. So the first one, we actually already did this before I started the recording. This is just equal to negative 2 pi over 19. Because what we did is we checked the range of inverse sine is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And this value does fall in between there. So we're done. So part D, this is instead of an inverse sine and then sine, it's cosine and inverse cosine. This is the one that's a little tricky. Um, I don't know if you guys can hear the helicopters going overhead. Those are the Camp David helicopters. Um, what angle? causes a cosine of 2.24. Well, there's no angle that causes a cosine of 2.24 because cosine of theta, its range is negative 1 to 1. So in this case, there's no answer. There's no value that would give me an inverse cosine of 2.24. So I can't even go inside the next one. So this is sort of like thinking about the range. It had a fall between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. In this case, um, I, I cannot get an angle that falls in that range for my inverse cosine because there's no cosine that gives me a value of greater than 1. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, make sure you type something into the chat since I'm going to just try to go through this section and then um, stop the recording and I'll ask more more questions. Um, what the following three are is instead of inverse sine and then sine, it's giving us one inverse trig function and do, doing a different um, function on the outside. So A and B were similar, C and D are similar. Now the remaining three are similar. So let's look at E, F, and G. And we have X is equal to sine of inverse cosine of three-fifths. This one is X is equal to secant of tan inverse of 1. And g is equal to inverse sine cosine of 11 pi over 6. All right, so let's 
let's think about all of these. Um, this first one, as soon as you think, see, 3 over 5, you think, whoa, this is not a special triangle. This is not a triangle that I know the angle of. So the first thing I do in this case is I draw a triangle. It's not going to be one of my special triangles. But I know I'm trying to find this angle theta. And it's the angle that would cause my cosine to be 3 over 5. Well, I remember that cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So 3 over 5 means that my adjacent side is 3 and my hypotenuse is 5. So what I have to do is find this missing side. Hopefully we're all good at it. this at this point. We would say 3 squared plus question mark squared equals 5 squared. And question mark equals 16. So that means that missing side is 4, the 3, 4, 5 triangle. Once I have that, now I think, okay, whatever that angle is, so this is equal to an angle, inverse cosine, inverse sine, inverse tangent. The output of it is an angle. I don't know what that angle value is, but I don't care. All I care about is, okay, if I have that angle, which is represented by this triangle I have over here, what would the sine be? Well, the sine is just opposite over hypotenuse. So it's just 4 over 5. That's it. These aren't difficult problems. What it is is difficult to figure out how to attack them. Because you notice what I've been doing are totally different methods for each of these kinds of problems. So question E, I relied on the triangle. Um, let's look at part F. And one, that makes me sort of remember a special angle. And let's see, the one, if I go back up here to my triangles, um, and I would, I mean, you'll have, um, I can't remember how I'm making this test. Let me peek at, because every class I'm doing differently, because I guess I like to make my life more interesting. Okay, this test, this test three is just open book, open note. It's not a crib sheet this time. Um, but I would actually, when I wrote, started the exam, I would actually draw these two silly triangles to keep my brain active about what the angles are. So I'm going to just go ahead and copy this one and bring it down here. And pop it here. And remind myself that tan inverse of 1 over 1, tangent is opposite over adjacent. So that's going to be my 45, 45, 90 triangle. So really, I can rewrite this tan inverse of 1 as just secant of pi over and it's because that is, in fact, in the um, range of what inverse tangent is. That's quadrant one. So what do I do with, um, with this? Well, now I have to remember secant is, let's see, that's one over cosine. So that's equal to hypotenuse over adjacent or and again, reading right off of the triangle here, hypotenuse over adjacent, and all right, I think somebody raised their hand and put it down, so I'm going to ignore that. Um, so that means my answer is just square root of 2 over 1 or square root of 2. So when I've got the sine and the cosine or secant and tangent, when I have two different trig functions, you notice in these cases, I'm drawing the triangle to figure out what the missing sides, sides are. So now we've got the final one. And boy, this will be the best quiz that
that you ever turn in because I'm going through all of this, but that's all right. The point of the quizzes are not to see what you can do on your own. That's what exams are for. This is for practice. And if this is helping us all get ready for the, um, the exam, I'm all for this. So cosine of 11 pi over 6. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw my unit circle and think 11 pi over 6 that lands here. So this has a reference angle of 11 pi over 6 because 11 pi over 6, that's all the way around like that. So I do know I'm in quadrant number 4. So um, if I have a reference angle of pi over 6, I know my inverse sine of pi over 6, but this is in really negative pi over 6 because, um, oops, I'm sorry, that's pretend I didn't write that. Um, this is what the cosine of pi over 6 would be. So I'm going to go and steal my other triangle here. All right, if I have cosine of pi over 6, it's the same thing as pi over 6. And pi over 6 is my 30 degrees. So my cosine of pi over 6 would be 1 over, I'm sorry, square root of 3 over 2. You don't have to do this intermediate stuff of writing down what the sine inverse is. It, but I'm writing this out just so you know where it's coming from. But to be honest, once I know that I'm, it's this triangle I'm talking about, I now want to know what the sine of 30 degrees is. Once I figured out that I'm talking about 30 degrees, the sine of 30 degrees is simply equal to 1 half. But again, we have to figure out, whoops. Okay, hold on taking a drink of coffee. So as I was coming up with the answer of one half, my brain was like, whoa, Professor Jagadich, what the heck are you doing? Inverse sine doesn't give you numbers like one half. It gives you an angle. One half, I mean, I guess one half could be an angle, but no, 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 no. Take a step back. I want to know what angle would give me a sine of square root of 3 over 2. Well, that would actually be equal to pi over 3. So uh, now that I found what the cosine is, now I have to say, OK, what angle would give me that same value for that cosine, that um, for that 11 pi over 6, and that happens to be pi over 3. So this is probably the most confusing out of all of them. That's equal to um, pi over 3. And again, I check the sine positive or negative. Cosine is positive in quadrant 4. Sine is positive in quadrant 1. So this is the range of sine of arc sine is negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. And since the cosine was positive, quadrant sine is positive in quadrant 1. So I'm going to pick pi over 3 and not negative pi over 3. So that last bit, this last one, was probably the worst that we could have. Um, it's set up similarly to question E, but question E was the sine on the outside and then the inverse cosine on the inside. What makes G a little bit hard to think about is that it's the cosine on the inside and the arc sine on the outside, but we're still solving it sort of the same way.